So good morning. Welcome to Flint United Methodist Church, January the 30th. We're going to start with 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace, my gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad, the honors of the the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the phallus clean, his blood of Listening to his voice, through life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise ye dumb, your loosened tongues implore. Ye blind, behold, your Savior's come, and be ye lame for joy. In Christ your head you then shall know, shall feel your sins forgive. Anticipate your heaven below, and all that love is hell. On our call to worship, our response is, Open our hearts, O Lord, that we may see you. We gather to worship God, who alone can heal us and make us whole. Open our hearts, O Lord, that we may see you. We gather to worship God who transforms our lives with his healing touch. Open our hearts, O Lord, that we may see you. We gather to worship God in spirit and in truth. Open our hearts, O Lord, that we may see you. Next is 170. Oh, how I love Jesus. 170. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing His word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because He first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. It tells me of whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who any sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Please be seated. Please be seated. So as I look at the birthday list today, we have uh, Frank Gilbert's birthday is today. Happy birthday. Oh, you are welcome. You're welcome. That's the only name on my list for, for this week. Any other birthdays this week? Any other birthdays this week? All right. Well, we're going to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. 
And then on our anniversary, uh, we have uh, Frank and Darlene Gilbert, and theirs is Saturday, February the 5th. So that's almost, a, almost two weeks away. All right. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary. There you go. I forgot to ask if there were any others. All right. So we're uh, we're continuing to uh, pray for Jay and Sydney. Although I think they're close to coming off. They're getting around and doing lots. We're lifting up uh, Catherine Klingle, uh, who's the wife of the police officer in Madisonville. Uh, Eddie Tibbetts, uh, Jerry Gustavus, um, and then we're continuing our prayers for Bill and Robbie. Uh, Jim Wade, Bob Dietz, uh, Letha and Bobby, uh, their great-grandson Seth and Jan and uh, Tanya Archer. And then uh, keep the family of Billy Moss in your prayers. That service is soon. I'm not sure when. Um, the, she, she used to run the newspaper in uh, Normandy. Her grandson's running it now. Um, any, anyone else? Anything else? Don Price passed away this week. Okay. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> Just a uh, we, reminder, we're doing a song service over at Madisonville Care Center, and the next service is on the 8th of February. So if you can uh, make it over there with, with me or on your own about 2 o'clock. It's at 2 o'clock when we start. And um, just uh, if you're planning to come, reach out to me, and I'll give you all the details about how we get in and how the service goes. But that'll be on February the 8th, which is a Tuesday, and that's 2 o'clock. And also just a reminder about Share Shop. Still opening Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to uh, 3. And I keep hearing good things about how the Share Shop's helping people. So that's wonderful. Anything else? Any other announcements, prayer concerns? Let's, uh, let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord God, through Jesus Christ, you have made it possible for us to know you and for us to be known by you. We come to you today to offer you praise and thanksgiving. And we ask you, Lord God, to open our hearts so that we will be ready for anything that you have for us. Help us, God, to be faithful. Help us, God, to, to do those things that you want us to do. May we be ready to serve you, to serve others, to love you, and to uh, love others. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. As we join in the prayer, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's join now in our prayer illumination. Lord, Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. So our reading today is from Daniel chapter 2, verses 26 through 30. We're on page 252 of, uh, of the story. The king asked Daniel, also called uh, Belshazzar, are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain the king's mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. 
Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you lay on your bed are these. As you were laying there, O king, your mind turned to things to come, and the revealer of mysteries showed you what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than other living men, but so that you, O king, may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand and let's join now in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Next is uh, 408. The Gift of Love, 408. Oh, I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to awe-inspire, but have not love, my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Though I may give all I possess and striving so my love profess, but not begin my love within the prophet's suit go strangely be come spirit come our hearts our spirits long to be made whole, but in what love guide every need by this we worship and our I don't know why, but I like that song. Please be seated. <laughs> Let's uh, bow for prayer. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So as we, as we finished up last week, we, we saw the fall of Judah, and we saw the Babylonians taking over Judah, the southern kingdom, and so now there's no longer... Uh, a, a people that, that have a country. There's no longer any kings that are autonomous and, and uh, the best and the brightest have been taken off into Babylon. The, uh, we think that there were, uh, we, 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 we read about three different groups that are taken and, and these, this happens, we think, between 605 and about 585 uh, B.C. And, and, and as, as, the, as the end happens, we read the verse last week about, about how the, the, and this is from uh, chapter, uh, this will be chapter 17, and it's from 2 Chronicles 36. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them through his messengers again and again, because he had no pity on his people and not on his dwelling place. <laughs> But they mocked God's messengers, despised his word, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was aroused 
and against his people, there was no remedy. There was no remedy. And, 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 and I think the Bible is clear that when we choose to go against God, um, we may go against God for quite a while before we experience any consequences. But at some point, there will be consequences. And it, it's difficult to imagine how the, the fall of Judah and even the fall of Israel affected the people. I mean, when a foreign power comes in and takes over, you got to figure this is bad for, for the people. Yeah. And, and, and you think it, you, you have to just imagine, or I imagine that their worlds fell apart. You know, and, and, and it got me to thinking, what is it, you know, that happens when when our world ceases to exist. You know, and I think back to the history that I've looked into, you know, and, and, and these kinds of things happen during war as, as armies come into regions and the people who live there are displaced. And I can think of pictures from, from the Civil War, from World yeah. War I, from World War II, you know, of, of roads full of people fleeing, fleeing, yeah. The battlefronts. But, you know, it, it doesn't have to be war. It, it could be illness. It could be a job loss. It could be uh, something happening to someone in the family. Um, you know, what, what is it that goes through our minds when our, when our existence as we know it falls apart? You know, my, my, uh, my heart is heavy for a friend of mine. Uh, his, he had a granddaughter born um, in uh, July, early July, seven, about seven months old. She has a brain tumor. And, and they, uh, they, they want to, you know, they were wanting her to get to be about 18 months before they did surgery. But they've decided they've got to do surgery now. And I can't imagine what these parents are going through, what, the, what my friend's going through as the grandfather. You know, and, 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 and in a small way, you think, well, the world that they knew, the world that they knew ceased to exist. And you know, and there are, there are Psalms that speak to the Babylonian exile. Psalm 137 is one of them. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat, we wept when we remembered Zion. <laughs> there on the poplars, we hung our hearts. For there our captors asked us for songs our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? You can just hear the despair and the longing for their situation to be turned yeah. back so that they could get back to... Uh, to living the life that they used to have. You know, and, and one of the, the lessons I think we get today from, from our story is God never abandons us. God never abandons us. And uh, our lesson today in chapter 18 is about Daniel and Daniel's friends um, and, and, and their, their example of faith as they, uh, as, as we, as we are related, or we get to see them in exile. Daniel may be the best known of all the, the exiles, and, and his friends are perhaps the best known uh, of the friends. Um, now, I just, just one of the things I struggle with this book of Daniel because Daniel and his friends, the the Bible just tells us about their faith. And, and they never seem to falter in their faith. And, and, and it's a testament. You know, we've been talking uh, just week after week after week about how people are not paying attention to God. They're not following God's ways. But yet here we find four young men. And, and, and the, the commentaries tell us that these guys were probably teenagers, you know, 16, 17 maybe. And, and, but here we have these young men keeping the faith. And so my, my uh, theory is that perhaps there were many throughout, uh, throughout Israel, throughout Judah, who kept the faith, but they were just a small minority. 
And eventually the sin of most of the people caught up with everybody. But Daniel and his friends, they decide to stay true no matter what. They, they were attentive to their prayers. They refused to give in to false idols. They chose to love God and to love others. Now, in the, in the groups that were taken, certainly the first group, it was the best and the brightest. Daniel and his friends are, are uh, sons of the elite, maybe even sons of royalty. And they are taken in, and, and they are going to be put into the king's service. Um, and in fact, they're, they're at the beginning of chapter 1. He says, okay, the king tells the, the chief of his court officials to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the... Uh, the nobility, and then there's a description of what he wants. He wants young men without any defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, qualified to serve the king's palace. And they were going to teach him about the culture of the Babylonians. It's like they're having a Mr. <laughs> a Mr. Judah contest. Might have made a reality TV show for him. You know, they... Let's pick some guys, let's bring them in here. And they, they set them up for three years of training. And they were going to be given the best that they could be given. And, and you know, and, and the ones, there was Daniel, and they, they all got new names. Daniel became Belshazzar, and Hanaya became Shadrach. Uh, Mishael um, became a Meshach. And there was a guy, he was Azariah, and he became Abednego. And uh, when my kids were little, there was Veggie Tales. Maybe I don't know if they're still around. You don't see it as much as you used to. I know it's still out there. But Veggie Tales, they the, was a, a was cartoons where the the Bible characters were all vegetables. And so Veggie Tales did Daniel, and uh, in in Veggie Tales, the names were Rack, Shack, and Benny. Rack, Shack, and Benny for for Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. And, uh, and when we, we have chapel for the Mother's Day out down in Normandy, and they, they do the story of Daniel every year. And, and when we do chapel with them, we do a verse. And the verse that we use for them is uh, Daniel 1.8, just the, the first part of that verse. Daniel resolved not to defile himself uh, with the royal food, the, the wine. And uh, he asked the chief official not to defile himself in this way. Daniel was a person of faith and he chose, even when he could have, you know, he was in a foreign place, foreign culture, he had the luxuries of this new culture available to him because he was going into the service of the king and the king wanted his people to have the best. But Daniel chose not to defile himself. And what an example that sets for us. You know, that, that we would choose not to defile ourselves. That we would choose to be faithful in our prayers. Faithful in not having idols. Faithful in, uh, in loving God and loving others. And, and uh, I, I was reading in Galatians this week. And Paul is writing to the Galatians in chapter 1. And he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you. In the grace of Christ. Astonished, you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ. You see, our sinful tendency is to drift away from God, not to drift towards God. And if, if we are going to be connected to God and do the things that, that God wants us to do, we have to be intentional. It's not something that happens by accident. Because by accident, we're, we're further away from God tomorrow. And we're much further away in a week. We have to resolve ourselves to stay connected to God. Or in, in the words of the book of Daniel, we have to resolve ourselves not to defile ourselves so that we ourselves won't be astonished that we have moved away from God. Now God uh, God chose to have the officials that were watching over our four uh, our four folks. He, he they they had favor. And so when Daniel came to him and 
He, uh, he asked, he said, I would like to eat nothing but vegetables and drink water. And the official was, was, uh, was concerned Sorry. about it. He was like, look, if you go on this different diet, different than what the king said, and something goes wrong, it's going to be my fault. And Daniel said, well, why don't we just try it and see? And the guard said, okay, we'll try it and see. <coughs> and so they did. And so the guard uh, took away their, their choice food, the wine they would drink, and gave them vegetables instead. And at the end of the test, Daniel and his friends looked better than anyone else who, who was there. You know, I, I, I don't know why, but I spent way too much time this week trying to figure out what the guard did with all this food. You know, what happened to all this choice, fine food that came from the king's stores and it went to for Daniel and his friends and then it went somewhere else? And I've been trying to figure out where to go. What did the guard do with it? You know, I figured, did he open a grocery store? Did he open up a nice restaurant? I don't know. I don't know why, but that's, that's been on my mind this week. The Bible tells us uh, these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding, all kinds of literature and learning. Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. And then in the matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters of the whole kingdom. You know, if you read the book of Daniel in the Bible, um, there are parts of Daniel where you wish you had Daniel and his vision ability to help you understand what Daniel is uh, talking about. But I think, I think what we find even here in the book of Daniel is bad things happen when we disobey. But the reverse of that, I think, is true. Good things happen when we choose to obey. And, and God never abandons us, even when we find ourselves in a time of exile. And God gives gifts to all of God's people. Daniel and his friends are given the gift of wisdom and knowledge and the ability to discern. And it's important for us, just like Daniel, to stay true to our faith. So we get, we get and, and there, there are several different things that happen to Daniel and his friends. One of the ones that fascinated me the most is the king has a, really, has a dream he doesn't understand. The king wants to understand the dream. And so the king calls in his people and he says, okay, here's the deal. I've seen you, he, he does, I'm just going to paraphrase this. He says, I've seen you guys work before, so here's how it's going to work this time. What I want you to do first is tell me what my dream was. And then I want you to tell me what the dream, mean, dream means. Because, because if you can't tell me what the dream was, I have no confidence that you can tell me what it means. Well, there's a lot of protests that go on. And I, it, it seems that Daniel is not involved with this in the early stages. It's just the king's you know, aides are there, his enchanters, his... his um, magicians, he's, he says, okay, tell me the dream, tell me what it means. And they're like, look, we can't tell you the dream, only you know the dream. And the king says, okay. And finally the king gets so mad, he says, okay, I'm going to get me a new set of dream interpreters. We're going to kill the ones we have now, and I'm going to get a new set. And that included Daniel and his friends. And so the guards come, and they go to Daniel and say, okay, this is a bad day for you. You're going to be executed because no one can tell the king his dream or interpret it. And Daniel is able to, to say, well, what, what if I could talk to the king first? And so Daniel goes, talks to the king, and the king gives Daniel a day, and Daniel and his friends pray. And then Daniel is able to go back and explain the dream to the king. And uh, there, there in uh, Daniel 2, 18, Daniel urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be, uh, be executed. 
And, 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 and so he goes to see the king. The king says, are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? And Daniel was. You see, God doesn't abandon us. Daniel and his friends, or, or Daniel's friends, are, uh, uh, there, there's a gold statue, really tall, gold statue built. And the king says, you, you, bow, you, when I tell you to, when there's a noise or a sound, a symbol, you know, they, they were going to make a noise. Everyone has to bow down to this statue. Daniel's friends don't do it. They're thrown in the fiery furnace. And God rescues them from the fiery furnace. And then another king uh, is convinced that anyone who prays should only pray to the king. And, and these were people that wanted Daniel to get out of the way. Dan Daniel and his faith, Daniel and the way he lived. Daniel was not corruptible. And so a lot of the other officials were not able to, to be corrupt because Daniel was right there in the way. And so they, they worked it out so that if you prayed to anything but the king... You were going to be thrown into a lion's den. And Daniel never stopped praying to God. And Daniel never prayed to the king. And he was caught. He was thrown in the lion's den. And Daniel survived. The, uh, the, the, the exile is temporary. And the prophet Jeremiah prophesying uh, shares that this is what the Lord says. Um, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people, is my people Israel and Judah, back from captivity, and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess. When seventy years are completed uh, for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope for a future. When you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, places where I have banished you declares the Lord and will bring you back to the place which I carried you into exile. And we'll get into the coming back from Babylon. That'll be what we'll, we'll look into next week. And, and, and to me, the, 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 the overriding message for today is that God never abandons us. God never abandons his people, regardless of where we are, regardless of the exile that we find ourselves in when we do. And our task is to stay true to our faith, to uh, continue our prayers, to avoid idols. You know, uh, every moment of our life, we are worshiping something. And any time we, we were, that worship is not going to God, then we, are, uh, we, we likely have an idol. Our task is to love God. And to love others. Everything we do as a, as a congregation, as a church, as a faith community requires us to be faithful, to be attentive. And maybe God is calling some of us into a new work. And uh, it's up for us to listen. It's up for us to, 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 to think about the gifts we have and how God wants to use those to further the good news of Jesus Christ. That Christ's death and resurrection make possible a relationship with God. And our task is to share that with others. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love and for your grace. And we thank you that you are always with us. And help us, Lord God, to always be faithful to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we'll re we receive our offering at the plate there at the back. We encourage you to, uh, to leave your offering there. If you would mail an offering to the church, it's Post Office Box 14, Flynn, Texas, 77855. I would invite the congregation to stand and let's sing together our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings.
our hymn of commitment today is uh, 507, Through It All, 507. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you the gift of his peace. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, guide us. Thanks for being here.